In this video, I'll be discussing the basics of a program, give you an introduction to programming, and where we're headed with uh, the course. So the agenda, we're going to learn what is a program, what is a programming language, what's the difference between something called the source code and the machine code, uh, and what's the difference between an interpreter and a compiler, and working with Java. So which specimen is a program? So if I give you these two different specimens, one is how to be a glutton and one is binary. Binary, obviously zeros and ones, but the other specimen is uh, a sort of a list. So the first one, so how to be a glutton. So number one, buy cookie dough. Number two, lay out the cookie dough on tray and five centimeter diameter circular goodness. Uh, preheat that oven to 425 degrees Fahrenheit Place the cookie tray with the cookies in the oven for 15 minutes. Remove the tray and proceed with your gluttony, enjoying those uh, delicious cookies. So which one is actually a program? Okay, so we have the recipe for how to be a glutton and we have the binary. Now, if you said how to be a glutton, you would be correct. So based on what is the difference between these two things. So a program is a plan that lays out a sequence of actions to achieve a goal. So in this case, the goal was quite obvious. It was how to be a glutton, whereas there's no obvious plan or uh, even a sequence that is really worked out in the binary. So why was how to be a glutton more like a program than the actual binary? because it was a recipe. That's the main idea there. It gave step-by-step -step, step action, starting from the beginning all the way to the end. And then after finishing the program, you achieved the desired goal, which is being a glutton and enjoying those cookies. So the binary was just a bunch of numbers, not a real program. We had no idea if it represented anything or not. So let's try it out. So maybe with a partner or on your own a sheet of paper, uh, here's, you're going to try and come up with a program. So try to come up with the steps to instruct an alien to put on a jacket when they can only understand basic things like color, material, type, up and down, etc. So very, very basic instructions. Take some time, write it out. What steps would you tell them in order to actually put on a jacket? So think about maybe if you have a, even if you have a younger sibling, how would you have taught them to put on their jacket if they could only understand very basic uh, actions. Okay, and then once you've gone through that, uh, what do you notice from this activity? Uh, so clearly stating the steps to achieve a task is not easy. So as you're coming up with this activity, uh, think about all the individual steps required to put on that jacket. This might be a good time to pause the video right now while you're working through this activity. It's very important that you go through this. It gives you an idea of how difficult it is really to come up with the steps involved in making a program. So notice that you probably were not able to make any assumptions. You can't assume that the alien knew certain things you had to give every single possible step. So now what is a programming language? Now an art, it's an artificial language that's similar to English and designed to give instructions to a computer. Now the language is made up of special words which we call keywords and we refer to this collection of keywords as a dictionary. So if you try to use a word that's not in the dictionary you actually get an error. Is the program um, or the uh, the computer is not sure what to do with this if it's not in that dictionary. Now the use of this language must follow a set of rules. So in English we call these rules grammar. In programming we call this set of rules syntax. So when we're talking about errors in your syntax, we're talking about something similar to grammar. So how are you typing it in? Uh, are you following the proper rules that will lead to that? code or those keywords executing in your program. So syntax is the set of rules and even the formatting that governs programming instructions to ensure their validity so they can be recognized by the computer. 
Some examples of programming languages, you may have heard of some of these, so such as Turing, C, C Sharp, C++, uh, Java, which is what we're going to use, JavaScript, BASIC, HTML, Python, ActionScript, etc. And there's any number of these that uh, we haven't included in this list. The source code. So what is the source code? This is the code that you write. So you as the programmer, this is what you're writing out. It usually looks like English words. So here's an example of Java. This would output the text, hello world. Okay, but there's a specific instruction that comes before that that is telling the computer or the compiler what it needs to actually do on this line. So that's the recipe. So source code is meant to be read by people. So it's obvious um, that something in terms of this hello world sentence is going to, be, to have something done to it. So it's easy to understand for computer scientists, and sometimes it's understandable to non-techies. So depending on uh, how it's actually written out, you may or may not understand what you're seeing. So right now, that line doesn't totally make sense to you, um, but it will once you actually start working with the syntax. So oftentimes we refer, we refer to it simply as code. We may not say source code, but just code. Uh, this is because a code refers to something only readable by the intended audience. So program code is intended to be read by other programmers, which is not the average person. So therefore, it just looks like code to them. The machine code. So what is the problem with source code? Machines cannot understand source code. The machine does not understand the English that you type into your file. So imagine a new student shows up in class tomorrow that speaks Russian. The teacher does not. How will the teacher communicate with this student? A translator might be useful, so someone to convert my English into Russian. Um, I definitely cannot speak Russian, so I would need to have a translator come in and help me out. So we need something similar for our programs, so such as a translator. In programming, we call this translator a compiler. So we have the source code. We apply it into the compiler. That compiler uh, alters it so that it becomes machine code. And now machine code is simply a collection of ones and zeros, which we call binary. And this is actually what the computer can understand. Okay, so it needs to go through what we type in. needs to go through a step that allows the machine to read it. Some other translators. So a compiler goes through all of the machine code and translates it into or sorry all of the source code and translate it into machine code all at once there's another type of translator out there called an interpreter an interpreter works similarly to a compiler but has one major difference rather than compile everything at once it only does one line at a time so this actually allows for a faster initial start and much easier bug fixing but it's actually slower as it's as it's executing because it needs to both convert and execute the code. The compiler will convert everything and then execute so it's faster when you're executing. But with the interpreter, it's faster to start up because it does not have to go through the entire source code at once. Okay, it goes through each line one at a time. Most scripting languages such as HTML, PHP, and JavaScript are interpreted languages whereas languages such as C, C Sharp, C++, and Swift are all compiled languages. Java is actually both compiled and interpreted. So now working with Java. When writing our programs, we use a tool that's called an Integrated Development Environment, which is also uh, given the acronym IDE. So this tool is very powerful. It allows us to edit, compile, test, and fix our code all in a single piece of software. So this is very important. If we want to be able to uh, work efficiently with our code, we need to be able to do all these things in one piece of software. So the number one IDE for Java is Eclipse, which is the IDE we will use in our class. Other handy features IDEs offer are text highlighting, text completion, which is called IntelliSense, so it knows what you want to type and sort of gives you an idea of what the rest of your code is going to be, and even a collection of debugging, which is code fixing tools. So if there's any errors in your code, 
it will recognize that and let you know immediately. The next few quests will help you set up and familiarize yourself with the Eclipse IDE for later use in the course.